That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight is a program of adventure with Howard Duff as your host. Here's a preview. Wally, please take it easy. I can't keep up. I'm a great deal older than you are. Yes, you are. But then I'm a great deal younger than you are, so it all balances out. You see that valley ahead of us? Yes, I'm not blind, I'm just tired. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. If someone asked me what are the most valuable things we have, I would have to answer books. Because books have not only enlightened us and entertained us throughout our history and theirs, they have also recorded that history for us. 1,000 years ago, there was a great and famous poet historian named Ferdusi, a Persian scholar who wrote an astonishing book called the Shanama. What was astonishing about it? Well, for starters, it was nearly 60,000 verses long, and it took him 35 years to complete. The Shahnama is a history and verse of the cradle of civilization as reflected in the lives and deaths of its rulers. It is probably the most valuable book anywhere in the world today, and any collector would give his soul just for a look at it. It's a massive, leather-bound, gold-leaf volume, and its normal home is in the Imperial Museum of well, what used to be called the Imperial Museum of Tehran. Today, Allah alone knows what they call it. But right now, the Shah Nama has been on loan to London's Johnsonian Museum, and it's on its way back to where it belongs. Pound for pound, it's worth its weight in diamonds. But it might never get there, because two upright, trusted members of the museum's security force have decided they're going to steal it. As a matter of fact... They've already found a buyer for it. And that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater. A new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Shah Nama by Alan Caillou. Our stars, Lloyd Bachner and Sidney Swire. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Now, stealing a priceless manuscript like the Shah Nama is really not that easy. I mean, it's not your everyday book from the local library. Inside the guarded walls of a good museum, it's safe. But when it's being carried from point A to point B... It becomes extremely vulnerable. Would you care for another Bloody Mary, sir? Yes, I believe I would. <laughs> What's your name, love? Holly, sir. Oh? <laughs> do you get to deck the halls at Christmas? <laughs> I'm afraid I do, sir. <laughs> and you, sir? The same again? Uh, yes, thank you. Coming right up. Mr. Doyle. What is it? Have you spotted the copper yet? I think it's the fellow in the gray suit with the old school tie about six rows back. Are you sure there really is one on board? Oh, yes, there has to be. I've made a dozen deliveries like this. There's always an undercover man. Backup stuff in case something goes wrong. And with a priceless book like this, there might even be more of them. He's not going to get hurt, is he? Why should he? Not unless he starts cutting up. In which case, he's liable to finish up with a bloody great lump on the back of his head. One Bloody Mary, one Scotch on the rock. Uh, thank you, love. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is your captain speaking. We'll soon be crossing over from Turkey into Iran. If you look down on the left of the aircraft, that lake there is Lake Van in Turkey. And in a few minutes, you'll see also on the left, Lake Ormia in Iran. We're flying at 30,000 feet, and there's nothing ahead of us but beautiful flying weather. Thank you. Maris, you look nervous. We're almost there. Think of the money. Yes. Yes, that's what I'm trying to do. Hello? The fellow in the gray suit. He's gone. He went to the loo, Maris, just a moment ago. Uh. Even cops have to use a loo once in a while. Uh. And the time has come, I think, for the next step in our very worthwhile endeavor. Uh, stewardess. Yes, the same again? No, thank you. But uh, 
I have a note here for the captain. For the captain? Yes, the pilot. And there's no reason why you should not read it. Oh, my God. The bomb is here in my carry-on. The bomb? Yes, a bomb. Go tell him. Yes, sir. Yes, of course. Well, now we wait. Suppose he can't find the landing strip. He'll find it. And, and, and suppose, suppose there's no one there when we land. Ah, oh, well, that would be a calamity, wouldn't it? But they'll be there. I planned this very carefully, Paris. Oh, drink up, it'll steady your nerves. Yes. Yes. Well, can I have your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen? This is the captain again. Uh, we have an emergency situation here. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the plane. We're in good shape. Nothing like that at all. It's just that, um... Well, I really hate to tell you this, but I have to. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been hijacked. Now, there's really nothing to be alarmed about. It happens once in a while. I have instructions to land and offload a passenger. Then it seems we will uh, continue on our happy way again. Uh, please fasten your seatbelts and observe the no smoking sign. We'll be landing shortly. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dorn, I'm Inspector Fenton, your backup man. I'm not supposed to disclose myself except in an emergency, but I see exactly that's what we have in our hands at the moment. Uh, don't worry about a thing. I'll be right behind you, and I'm armed, and I'll leave you now. Right on schedule. Right on? I know what I have to do. As soon as they land, get on board and order everyone out. Herd them out of the way. When they are cleared, fire a couple of incendiaries into the fuel tanks. You know where they are. In the wings. I know, I know. Mohammed, you go with him in the truck. Give him a hand. Keep the passengers covered. Okay. Osman, you stay with me. The two men are coming with us. They won't like that at all. I don't expect any trouble from them. They're just amateurs. But have your gun ready in case. You bet. They're down. All right. Let's get to work, gentlemen. think there's an aura of romance about the uh, daring heist of so precious a manuscript as the Shah Nama. But sometimes what starts out as a jolly sort of caper soon runs into tragedy. Over here, Mr. Doyle. Mr. Barry? Fajor, keep those people back. Get them away from here. Okay. Okay. Well, Miss Harper, it's good to see you again. And it's all going splendidly. Mr. Doyle. Have you got the book? Well, I'm not exactly carrying sandwiches in my briefcase. But, uh, I don't see the other truck. There are supposed to be two of them. You will use this one. I see. And you? I'll use it, too. You're coming along with us. The arrangement was you'd have a truck here for us and the money. I'll take the money now, if you don't mind. Mr. Doyle, I have three bodyguards. And as you see, they are all armed with machine pistols. I don't think that under the circumstances you can refuse me anything. I can, and I will. I made a deal with your father. A truck to take us into town for a quick getaway. He would like to see the manuscript before he hands over so much money. I'm afraid he doesn't quite trust you. Someone coming. You know him? Who's that? Yes, I know him. He's Inspector Fenton of Scotland Yard, the undercover man for this delivery. Doyle, for God's sake. Oh, she has to know. There's trouble coming, Barris. Uh, you better brace yourself for it. Oh, uh, no. Well, you're alone a half, aren't you? Yes. Well, I've seen your prison pictures. They don't flatter you in the least. I'm Inspector Fenton, Miss Harper, and we have a huge file at the yard of both you and your father. 
What are you doing in this neck of the woods? Don't, don't tell me. I already know the answer to that. I don't believe it. You calmly walk into three machine pistols and announce yourself as a cop. Your father, Miss Harper, is a thief, a con man, and a thoroughgoing rogue, but he's not a murderer. He would certainly never countenance the killing of a police officer, if only because he knows that he'd have every police force in the world after him. Oh, he far too circumspect a man for that. So you see, your guns don't worry me in the least. So why don't we just discuss the matter like civilized people? Try and work something out. The arrogance of it. You must be mad. Inspector... Stay out of this. Shut up, Barry. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Barry. I've had a great deal of experience with people like this. All they have going for them, really, is bluster. When the chips are down, you'll be surprised how quickly they back off. <laughs> what is it they say, Inspector? The female of the species is more deadly than the male. I'm a great deal tougher than my father. Osman! Of course. Oh, my God. Climb aboard, Mr. Doyle, Mr. Barris. Well, Miss Harper, I'd say you've made your point. Faisal, Mohammed, the incendiaries. And back to the truck, we are moving out. Is looking for us. And that poor man. That poor, poor man. They killed him. Oh, they killed him. Yes. I don't know quite what's going on over there, but they've gone now. And we stay by the plane, we wait for help. Won't be too long. Captain, can I have a word with you? What is it, Holly? In private. All right, over here. Captain, we have to follow on foot. Follow the tracks that truck has left. Are you crazy? We have to. Holly, there's only one kind of suggestion a skipper is ever going to take from a stewardess, and right now my hands are pretty full. I've got 85 passengers to worry about, and I... I'm not a stewardess. Say again. Well, a stewardess only for this particular flight. I am a police sergeant from Scotland Yard. Here, here's my identification. Of course. I came on this trip as backup support for Inspector Fenton, whom you just saw murdered. But such a good man... Holly, I think you'd better tell me what the hell this is all about. Those two men who went off in that truck were carrying a priceless manuscript to Tehran's museum. Someone is prepared to kill for it. We have to find out just who that someone is. And to do that, we follow their tracks for 20 or 30 miles or more in this desolate area on foot. It won't be very far. Why should it be? Obviously, those two men are the hijackers. And it's also obvious what's happened. They forced us to land close by wherever it is they are going to dispose of the manuscript. Now, you can't be sure of that. Yes, I can. They have to make their delivery and be out of the country fast before we are found and the whole story comes out. Well, that makes sense. But we have still have to stay with the plane. If you don't want to help me out, then I'm following those tracks myself. Somehow or other, I'm going to get the Shanama back where it belongs. All right. I'll hand over to the co-pilot. Harry! Yes, coming, Charlie! Take over here, Harry. I'm going for a stroll in the woods. In the, in, in the what? Now, when the rescue party gets here, have them follow our tracks. And tell them we'd both like a really fancy funeral. Take over, Harry. Yes, yes, sure. Of course, uh, we'll do. Uh, 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 Roger. to say, stealing is just like any other business enterprise. You've got to be good at it, or you're going to be ripped off by the experts. And the trouble with amateurs in crime is, they tend to bite off more than they can chew. When they do that, well, that's when they get bitten. I said you drive like a bloody maniac. Oh, come 
Thank you, Miss Harper. Out, everybody, out. Into the house, Mr. Doyle, Mr. Barry. You remember my father, gentlemen. Well, Mr. Doyle, Mr. Barris, what a great pleasure to see you both again. I'm so glad you made it safely. I hope that briefcase contains the manuscript. Let me say first, Mr. Harper, I don't like the treatment we've been getting one little bit. Our arrangement was for an exchange at the landing strip, a truck to take us back to town. Of course, of course, of course. I felt obliged, unfortunately, to... Change it slightly, and I must apologize for this miserable cottage. Not at all what I'm accustomed to, and I'm quite sure not at all that sort to which you are accustomed. But it will do for our business together, eh? If you please now, Mr. Doyle, the manuscript. No. Not till I see the color of your money. Oh, no, please. I must insist. Oh. Yes, you people do have a way of indicating your insistence, don't you? <laughs> there it is, the Shahnama itself. Now, if we could just take the money as agreed. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Yeah. Do you read Farsi, Mr. Doyle? No, I do not. No. Well, of course, as you know, the, the language of ancient Persia. Huh? Uh, let me see now. Eh? Hormiz was the son of Khosrows, but he had not the strength of his father. Nor would he do battle with the Christians. And so he was killed. Uh, and so he was slain with the acquiescence of his son. This is the stuff of his story, Mr. Doyle. Mm, you can show it to nobody. Oh, many collectors, Mr. Barris, are forced to gloat over their treasures in secret. The, the satisfaction is not in showing. The satisfaction is in owning. The money, then. We'll be on our way. We'll need your truck. No, no. No, no, no money. I, uh, would I not be very foolish to pay for something I already have my hands on? You're going to murder us also? What well, murder? This farmhouse is very isolated, yes. But in the course of time, someone no doubt will pass by and you will be... Murder us also, you say? There was a Scotland Yard man on the plane, Father. To his cost, he interfered. To his cost? You mean? I mean, Father, that he was killed. No, you don't know. In all my years, I, I, I've never taken a human life. And it is high time you grew up. These two must be killed, too. Uh, no, no, no. Osman, <laughs> take them to the cellar. Lock them up till I decide. I decide what is to be done with them. Yes, sir. Move. Doyle. Oh, what's going to happen to us now? Oh, shut up. Move. I said... Keep up. I'm a great deal older than you are. Yes, you are. But then I'm a great deal younger than you are, so it all balances out. You see that valley ahead of us? Yes, I'm not blind. I'm just tired. Green trees mean water. And in a place like this, water has got to mean a habitation of some sort. I don't know, a farmhouse maybe. And that might be where the truck went. The tire tracks go off to the right here. Holly, when we get there, what are we going to do? Well, I rather hope you'd have some ideas about that. I've never believed that all men are just naturally empty-headed. It only seems that way. All your life, Father, you will be haunted by the idea that two men still living know what happened to the Shanama. That is why they must not be allowed to go on living. Oh, they won't dare go to the police. What, they're going to admit they stole it? Since they are not getting paid, I think that is quite possible. The young one, Barris especially. Face it, Father. We are playing for very high stakes this time. 
Hilo now. All I want to do is to get into my little plane out there and fly off with my treasure. And I want to go home. No windows, no ventilators, no way out except through the door. I won't be damned if I'm going to wait for them to come in here and kill me. Get the guard in here. All right. We'll jump in the moment the door opens. I'll be right behind you. Guard! Hoffman! My friend is burning. Shut up in there! He's dying here, Hardegat! Oh, all right, calm down! They're coming! They're coming! Quick! Take his belt! Tie him up! And shut his shirt in his mouth! He's got a hard head. You know how to, how to use a machine pistol? We'll soon find out. This has to be the bolt, right? Yeah, I think so. So, we pull it back like this. Hey, boss. Keep your finger away from that. Yeah, okay, okay. We're ready now. All right. So let's go. The back stairway there. All right. And that's the truck they were using. Do you see any other? No, just the one. But I like that plane better. A Balanca. A nice little executive job. Can you fly it? You put wings on a bathtub and I can fly it. And will you marry me, Sergeant Holly? Oh, I don't mean tomorrow or the next day, but just as soon as we find out, we're compatible. Forget it, Charlie. And keep your mind on your work. I mean, here we are, lying in fragrant grasses on the slope of a scented hill, with the perfume of wild thyme all around us. Charlie, you have quite a way with words. But it's not wild thyme. It's basil. Whatever. And have you any idea at all what to do now? I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to think. <sighs> Wake me when the process is over. Over there. Can you see if there's, if there's anybody in it? Uh, I don't know. Hey, you there! Then you think you're going? Hey, I got him! I got him! Doyle, I got him! Doyle! Doyle! Run, 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 man. Run. It's... You're only. only... Oh, dear God. <laughs> that was two guns, not just one. You're dead right, Holly. And there's... <gasps> Barrett. So what's he running from, I wonder? How should I know? They went there to deliver the Shanama, and now he's running for his life. I say something went very definitely wrong. Uh huh. That sounds like a fairly logical deduction. You know, for a cop, you're quite a gal, aren't you? Yes, I am. Mr. Barrett, over here. Are you crazy? No. But now we have to join forces. I want to know what's going on. But Holly, he's got a gun. A bloody great machine pistol. Well, it's just what we need, isn't it? Duff again. So what have we got? Up on top of the hill, we've got a 50-year-old pilot who's fast becoming enamored of a 25-year-old police sergeant. There's also a 20-year-old museum guard up there who's just discovered that the first step over the border into crime isn't always uh, just a jolly caper. And far down below, in the hidden, abandoned farmhouse in the little green valley, there's the opposition. They're pretty deadly people. What's your name, kid? I mean, your first name. Oh, I'm afraid, uh, I'm afraid it's Tristram, sir. Tristram? Well, that has a nice, hearty ring to it. But tell me, Tristram, how did you ever get into this thing in the first place? 
You're just not the type for a life of crime. Well, uh, Doyle and I were detailed to make the delivery in Tehran. And, uh, she just talked me into it, I guess. It started off as just uh, uh, an exciting adventure, and uh, I never knew it was going to finish like this. People killed. I killed one of well, them. Don't uh, worry too much about that. The world's grossly overpopulated anyway. With a gun, I, I don't even know how to use. Well, give it to me. Yeah, I was brought up on these things. Sure. Oh, dear me. You've got it loaded and cocked and ready to fire, and the safety catch isn't even on. There. Oh, it's safe. Are we going to sit up here all day just talking? Any minute now, Silas Harper and his daughter will board that plane and just take off with the Shanama. Well, didn't you say you were going to think about that? I did. I didn't come up with the answer. Well, in that case, perhaps I'd better tell you exactly what we have to do now. You see where your squeamishness has brought us. They have escaped, both of them. All right, Doyle is dead. But the one I'm afraid of, Barris, is still out there somewhere, heading for whatever civilization he can find. And then the whole story will be out. Oh, I find this fascinating. The Shahnama insists didactically that the first Arab armies entered Persia in the year 633 A.D., while the Persians were still at war with Rome. Fascinating. Father. Uh, huh? Oh, don't worry about your young Mr. Barris, Elon. There's no way out of this valley except by truck or plane. You have more than a hundred miles of desert to cross on foot. And the desert will do what I was slow to do. His blood will not be on my hands. You see how it all works out? We have to leave here now, Father. You have the book. Let us go. No, no, no. We can't reach Istanbul before dark. You know how I hate night landings. We leave first thing in the morning. And through the night, I will continue to enjoy this masterpiece. <laughs> even, the, even the feel of its parchment in my hands is a delight. Another night in this dreadful place. I will go mad. How can people actually live in such dirty hovels? Dirty hovels? You are a spoiled brat, Ilona. That is what you are, exactly. A spoiled brat. Tristram, there's something I have to say to you. Yes, sir? You're young, you're big and husky and muscular, but you're still the weak link in the organization. You know that, don't you? I can pull my weight, Captain. Good. I'm glad you feel like that. Now, I'll tell you what your job is going to be. I'm going to be pretty busy getting that plane started up. With any aircraft I don't service myself, I just naturally seem to worry about. And as soon as I've checked over the plane, I want to burst from that machine pistol straight at the side of that truck where the petrol tanks are. Right. Now, I'll give you back the gun as soon as we sneak up on the aircraft. Then, before we take off, I want to see that damn truck in flames. Up to that moment, your job is to look after Holly here. He's going to look after me? She's very precious to me, Tristram. She is? Now, all this hinges on no other trucks. Just the one, Tristram. You're sure about that? Oh, well, when we drove in there, Captain, uh, there was no other transport in sight. Uh, not a thing. We've had time and elevation for a very good look, Charlie. That's their only truck, all right. Then without it, and without the aircraft... They're locked up in a jail of their own choosing with a hundred miles of nothing instead of iron bars to hold them there. It's perfect. Yes, it is. Charlie, you're a genius. Yes, yeah, so they tell me. All right, let's move on down. It'll be dark in a few minutes. I'll keep low, keep under cover. like in little pieces sailing through the night air. Now, we have to pick up the tail of the aircraft and swing it around 90 degrees for takeoff. There's a cloud coming over the moon. Wait a minute. Uh, 
she's thinking again. Good, I like that. All right. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now, pick up and swing. <laughs> It's well done. Uh, she's all set for takeoff. Uh, Holly, get that cabin door open and get yourself aboard. Aye, aye, sir. Tristan, here's the gun. Uh-huh. Keep it trained on that truck. Uh huh. Can you see it? A big fish in a little barrel. Right. Now, when I yell, you let him have it and then climb aboard. Now, give me a hand up, Holly. It'll only take a minute to get this little birdie ready for flight. I never did like anything less than a wide body check. Never mind. This is a great little machine. Okay, here we go. Hey! What's going on there? Come in, Christian. Right. Should he be see? Frates conquered Medea and even subdued Babylonia. <laughs> Ilona, this work is marvelous. Father, don't you understand? All of our transport is gone. We are prisoners. Prisoners? Prison is a state of the body, Ilona, not of the mind. I have the Shah Nama. Uh, and listen to this. Uh, the Arsazid Empire endured for 400 years. But then arose Ataxerxes, who was the son of Babek, sovereign of a small state. Uh, Ilona, it is marvelous. Father. Father. No. Uh, this is Captain Charles Winthrop aboard a private plane that I have to admit is stolen. I'm the skipper of that jet you fellas have already undoubtedly found. The one that got hijacked over Lake Urmia and burned up. Um, yeah. Well, well is anyone reading me? Over. Captain Winthrop, we are reading you loud and clear. Yes, we have found your plane. The passengers are now all on their way to Tehran for onward transmission. Where are you? Over. I'm approaching Tehran on 232. That's 232 degrees. I request clearance to land. Uh, who am I talking to? This is Lieutenant Shamhari, Captain Pindrop of the anti-fascist revolutionary armed forces, serving his elevated glory the leader. You are clear to land. Well, thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, there's just, uh, just one small thing you might like to know. Your Shah Nama, uh, you have heard of the Shah Nama, haven't you? Oh, yes, Captain. Well, it's now in the care of a man named Silas Harper and his daughter Elona at a farmhouse exactly 14, that's one, four miles on a bearing of 093 from where the burned out jet is. And they have no transport of any kind. Now, why don't you, uh, mosey out there and pick everything up. I'm coming in now. Over and out. Well, that should take care of everything, I think. Charlie, you're marvelous. Yes. When I think about myself, I get sick with admiration. <laughs> Tristram, are you prepared to give evidence in court in this case? It will make it a lot easier for you. Oh, yes. All the way down the line. Good. We'll do what we can for you. Holly, I want to make a point. I'm listening, Charlie. Now, really, wouldn't you like a father image for a husband? It could be very comforting for you. Don't you mean a grandfather image, Charlie? Oh, that hurts. Holly, give or take ten years. I'm not a day older than uh, 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 39. Mm. 
I'll tell you what to do. When we get back to London, you invite me to dinner, right? And then we'll have coffee at your place or mine. And we'll take it from there, right? Right. Seatbelts, everyone. We're going down. to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Shah Nama was written by Alan Caillou, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Howard Duff. Our stars were Lloyd Bachner and Sidney Swire. Featured in the cast were Alan Caillou, Antoinette Bauer, Hans Conried, Richard Peel, Corey Burton, and Lou Horn. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. Associate Director of Sears Radio Theater is Ken McManus. Sound effects were created by Bud Tollefson. Mark Trella is production supervisor. And the recording engineers are Joe Wachter and Hal McDonald. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Music 103, KMOX FM, St. Louis, 24 hours a day. CBS News. President Carter is inside the official residence of South Korea's President Park Chung-hee, the Blue House, for official talks which include U.S. troop withdrawals and human rights issues. This is John Bohannon reporting on the CBS Radio Network. President Park's official residence is called the Blue House because of its distinctively colored tile roof, and that's where Mr. Carter is now. Earlier, South Koreans officially welcomed Mr. Carter to Seoul, and Bernard Kalb was there. Back down to the background, tens of thousands of South Koreans waving American flags and South Korean flags as the presidential cavalcade moves through. President Carter standing in an open limousine with Mrs. Carter and daughter Amy and the president of South Korea, Park Chung-hee. Caracas, Venezuela, reports tonight that American businessman William Niehaus has been found in a town about 350 miles from the capital. Niehaus was kidnapped three years ago. For the first day in two weeks, Nicaraguan National Guard troops are not fighting with Sandinista guerrillas in the slum areas of Managua. The guerrillas moved out yesterday. Today, some people began climbing over barricades to get back into their homes. Some independent truckers claiming to represent drivers from nearly a dozen states met tonight in Kansas City, Kansas, and voted to continue their strike. Other drivers reportedly are going back to the roads. In Washington, the government has worked out a six-point program with a number of truckers to end the strike. Some have accepted it. Others have turned it down. Presidential aide Jack Watson says it's difficult to reach a single negotiated agreement because no one group represents all of America's independent truckers. There's been another earthquake in Southern California, the second in less than 24 hours. The latest quake registered 4.8 on the Richter scale and was centered just south of the resort community of Big Bear in the San Bernardino Mountains. Yesterday's earthquake was also in that area and registered 4.4 on the Richter scale. Big Bear is about 90 miles east of Los Angeles. Congressman Charles Diggs of Michigan has admitted that he used $40,000 in payroll kickbacks from his staff for his own purposes. He appeared before the House Ethics Committee, agreed to repay the money, and to accept censure from the House. Diggs is appealing a three-year federal prison sentence after being convicted of payroll padding and mail fraud. 
General Alexander Haig retired today as the Supreme Commander of NATO, ending 35 years in the military. There's been some talk that he plans to run for the Republican nomination for president, but he said today he has no political plans right now. The Eisenhower silver dollar never quite caught on, neither did the $2 bill recently reissued. But officials are hoping that Americans will accept the new Susan B. Anthony dollar coin. It's scheduled to be released on Monday. Treasury Department spokesmen say they hope the coin will stay in circulation and not in collections or on living room shelves. The federal government is urging Americans to spend the new coin, which may eventually replace the dollar bill. This is John Bohannon, CBS News.